1947 in Warwickshire, England, and this is Spencer Wilkes. He's the managing director of the Rover Company, and he has a dilemma. World War II has ended, and his fast and elegant rovers just aren't in demand. Spencer needs a stopgap just to survive the crisis. This is Maurice. He's Spencer's brother. He's also the chief designer at Rover, but today he's not working. He's doing farm work on his land in Wales. He's using his army surplus Willys Jeep when it dawns on him. His farm work would be so much easier if he had a cross between a tractor and a car, a utility four-wheel drive vehicle for farmers. Shortly after, he goes to the beach for vacation. He explains his idea to Spencer by sketching in the sand. Little does he know that this sketch in the sand will soon launch a British SUV legend. This is the story of the Land Rover, an all-terrain vehicle that was intended for farmers but would end up attracting the military, ER services, and adventurers lasting almost 70 years. Maurice and Spencer intended the Land Rover for farmers. The Wilkes brothers based the concept on the American Jeep. They used a Jeep chassis, an axle, and a Rover car engine. The SUV was equipped with a serial 48 horsepower engine and a modified gearbox, as well as a transfer case for a plug-in all-wheel drive with an overrunning clutch. When driving in a straight line, both axles were driving, and when braking or turning, the clutch opened and the front wheels rotated freely. The body of the first Land Rover was quite interesting. Have you noticed the riveted aluminum panels of the modern Defender, it's quite an unusual design. The fact is, in the post-war period, there was a serious shortage of iron in England. They found a quick and creative solution. With the end of the war, the country no longer needed as many bombers and fighters, and so a large amount of aluminum sat idle in warehouses. Aluminum sheets for aircraft cladding proved to be significantly cheaper than conventional steel. So imagine the original Land Rovers being made from aluminum aircraft wings, which made the car lighter in weight. The first prototype was called Center Steer. Hoping to get sales in Europe and not wanting to bother releasing versions with different steering positions, the Wilkes brothers decided to kill two birds with one stone by making the steering wheel in the center. Their hopes were justified when they revealed the pre-production model in the spring of 1948 in Amsterdam. It made a splash. The Spartan SUV lacked comfort, but it sold in 68 countries around the world just three months after production started. By the end of the first year, more new altering vehicles were produced than Rover cars. True, the steering wheel and the production version still needed to be replaced to a more familiar place. But now here's some good news. Recently, after a 23-year hiatus in America, Land Rover announced that they will start delivering the new Defender 110. The new Land Rover Defender 2021 promises to be the epitome of the brand's iconic character. Technological, fantastically robust, tough, and practical, it'll set new standards in the world of SUVs. That's how the manufacturer describes the new Defender. The three initial models of which are Defender 90, 110, and 130 with matching wheelbases. According to the manufacturer, the new Defender promises to be one of the most reliable and powerful cars in Land Rover history, and it's built on the all-aluminum D7X platform. The design of this iconic SUV continues the high-level off-road performance expected from a Defender. Revered by serious SUV fans and collectors alike, the Defender has its roots in more than 70 years of existence, starting with the original Land Rover to the last one that was sold in the US in 1997, after which safety regulations banned its sale in North America. Land Rover has earned a reputation in Africa for venture seekers, explorers, farmers, and safari guides. Older Land Rovers are still commonplace in Africa, serving loyally in the more remote regions of the world's wildest continent. But can the same be true regarding the reliability of the new Defender? Okay, sure, it meets market needs in Africa, but Land Rover also needs to meet consumer expectations in America because remember, this is the first Defender to sell in the States ever since 1997. But like the last model, it should prioritize off-road performance and durability. So what's the consensus? The new Land Rover Defender has a familiar boxy design and short overhangs, rides on high-profile tires, and has amazing ground clearance. We also find auto-locking center and rear differentials and a reduced range mode. Off-road lovers know that if a car does not have a differential lock, then this is no longer an off-road car. It would otherwise just be a car that gives the impression you can drive across the Sahara, but in fact you get stuck right after you get off the highway. What does the differential lock do? Even at the dawn of the automotive era, engineers realized that a solid axle for a pair of wheels is bad for your car. That's because cars don't just drive in a straight line because eventually you need to turn. Solid axles lead to rapid tire wear and reduced steering. That's why engineers look for a better solution. They divided the axle into two 
with each wheel on a half axle and they placed an open differential between them. The open differential allows each wheel to rotate at different speeds, like when you're cornering, to reduce tire scuffing, but it also provides the same torque or rotational force to each wheel, even if one wheel is entirely stationary and the other is spinning. In other words, equal torque on each wheel with unequal rotational speed per wheel. Open differentials made for cornering, but not for off-roads. That's why engineers came up with the locking differential. It essentially locks both wheels on an axle and forces both wheels to rotate at the same speed regardless of traction at each wheel. So each wheel has as much rotational force as the traction under it will allow, and the torque on each side shaft will be unequal. In other words, unequal torque, equal rotational speeds. Exceptions apply to automatic lockers, and more on that later. A locked differential can provide a significant traction advantage over an open differential, but only when the traction under each wheel differs significantly. All-wheel drive vehicles have three differentials, one on each axle and a central one between the front and rear axles. Most modern SUVs are equipped with traction control systems that reduce the effect of wheel spin. They operate on the same principle as ABS, only the other way around. A sensor is installed on each of the wheels to detect rotation speed. The computer reads the sensors, and if one wheel starts to rotate too quickly, in other words, starts slipping, then it instructs the braking system to slow down the wheel. Some systems also reduce the supply of the air and fuel mixture to the engine cylinders, in essence, strangling the engine. In most cases, the operation of these traction control systems is sufficient to eliminate severe wheel slippage. Automatic lockers lock and unlock automatically without driver input, which is very convenient. The center differential lock performs a similar function, but it ensures equal torque distribution not between the wheels of one axle, but between the front and rear axles of the car. What does it look like? For example, when you're going up a steep incline, the front wheels begin to slip. That's because most of the car's weight is shifted to the rear axle. In this case, the center differential lock will automatically turn on and it won't allow the torque to escape to the front axle. Since the torque is distributed evenly, not only to all the wheels, but also between the front and rear axles, axles of your SUV, it'll pick you up. The new Defender is equipped with Terrain Response System 2. Its intelligent electronics chooses the best mode of transmission depending on road conditions. This feature should help make Defender more popular on the highways and flat roads of America. The US has never been a big market for old-school Land Rover, but it seems that Defender's target market is wealthy consumers who appreciate practicality, versatility, and an adventurous spirit, even if they might not make full use of its off-road potential. The Land Rover has been one of the longest mass-produced 4x4s in the world. When production stopped in 2016 after 68 years of evolution, Land Rover faced a dilemma. How to replace it? Truly cool SUVs are an endangered breed. The world needs soft-top SUVs designed for modern families and those seeking adventure skiing, hiking, biking, and sports. The ability to cross Africa is just irrelevant to them. And refurbishing a crashed SUV that was never meant for quiet city life is difficult. That's why Land Rover is launching a solid high-performance SUV that also displays amazing refinement on the road. It's spacious and comfortable for everyday use with the usual features of modern Land Rover luxury including rich leather and beautiful wood trim. Even people who don't use it for off-road but for the average highway will regret spilling coffee on that nice leather. The cockpit is stylish and functional. Notice the handles, the door trim, and the trunk, which are bolted together with openings, and the large magnesium bulkhead that is part of the dashboard and the vehicle structure. Rubber floors and no rugs mean it's very easy to clean and sweep. A gear selector is installed on the dashboard to make room for an optional center front seat. There is also a tailgate with side hinges to which the external spare tire is attached, so it retains the best of the classic Land Rover. One of the biggest change is the chassis and suspension. The old Defender lasted for decades with this body-on-frame configuration. It might seem that a solid frame would guarantee safety, but actually, in an accident, there's a high chance that the body will fall off the frame, and the consequences of that is just unpredictable. The body itself is less rigid, which means it can cause more damage in the event of an accident. The new Defender uses a stiffer version of the sleek aluminum monocoque that's in the latest latest Land Rover Discovery and the Range Rover models. The new monocoque body has several advantages. For example, the car weighs less, which means more carrying capacity and interior space. This makes the SUV's interior more comfortable compared to previous Defender models. In contrast to the body-on-frame design, the monocoque carries both tensile and compressive forces within the skin, including special collision-deformable zones 
to increase passenger safety. The new monocoque system is more rigid than the conventional frame. A rigid body ensures safe handling. The old Defender and all-terrain vehicles have weak frames, excess weight, and higher center of gravity. Until recently, the frame was considered the basis of a real off-road vehicle. A load-bearing body was previously used on some off-road vehicles, but neither in the 50s nor in the 80s did technology make it possible to make a structural body that was strong enough and at the same time lightweight enough to be used on really bad roads. It wasn't until just recently that automakers have accumulated serious experience with high-strength alloys and computer-aided design to accurately design structural systems for greater safety. And that's how the new Defender appeared. The D7X aluminum load-bearing architecture is three times more rigid than the traditional structure. This is the strongest aluminum body from Land Rover. Its torsional rigidity is 29 kilonewtons per degree. As a comparison, the new Discovery 5 is 23. The Defender can handle up to 15,450 pounds of vertical suspension load, up to 661 pounds of static roof load, and 370 pounds of dynamic. In the process of fine-tuning, the body went through a program of extreme tests, and it turned out that the design was rigid, safe, and efficient, and guaranteed excellent off-road capabilities. For example, it can withstand up to 14,330 pounds of impact load. So to the delight of those who love to mix in their mud, the new Defender can be pulled out of any swamp. The tow hooks will hold up. In addition, side air intakes allow the car to be in water up to two feet. By reducing the weight of the body, it was possible to reduce the stiffness of the suspension in addition to driving comfort, this allows for increased suspension travel, which increases the traction of the vehicle and reduces the likelihood of landing on the belly. What about other advantages of the monocoque body? Less weight means less fuel consumption. There's no longer need to constantly carry 440 pounds of cargo with you in the form of fuel, which means that the range of travel without refueling increases and the fuel costs are reduced. A light car reacts faster to a driver's actions and the activation of electronic assistance occur much later. The result is sharper acceleration, quicker steering response, just 2.7 turns of the steering wheel, higher speed cornering, and shorter braking distances. This gives the driver a crossover-like feel. In addition to passive safety, active safety is also increased. If driving condition activates any electronic assistance, such as anti-lock braking system, dynamic stability control, emergency brake assist, and so on, the car reacts even faster. This significantly reduces the likelihood of getting into an accident, and passengers are safer. To protect radiators from sand and shock, the engineers shifted them more inward and upward within the body. Electronic components are protected from moisture, and the ground points are high enough to reduce the risk of electrical short circuits when crossing water. Comfort level also increased significantly because the car rate reduction allowed the suspension to be tuned for a more comfortable ride. This reduces driving fatigue, and sensitive passengers won't experience as much motion sickness and nausea. And as we already mentioned, removing the body on frame configuration makes the Defender more spacious. For example, the new trunk is larger. In the 5-door version 110, if you fold the second row of seats, its capacity reaches 2100 liters, with a luggage compartment height of 3 feet and a width of 4 feet. And when the driver and passengers are seated, they're fully supported by the seat cushion, which simulates sitting on a home sofa to reduce fatigue. And the maximum legroom in the front and rear of the cabin is just over 3 feet, which also adds to comfort. In addition, the new Defender uses air springs and a fully independent suspension. The air suspension provides height adjustment, increasing the vehicle's ground clearance and maneuverability everywhere. Its standard suspension height is 0.7 feet, and off-road, thanks to the air suspension, ground clearance can increase to 0.95 feet. That's what sets the new Defender suspension apart from the old. It can weigh deeper than the old Defender, up to 2 feet, and of course the increased ride height means more cross-country traction. And the fact that the new Defender has a fully independent suspension gives it a quieter and more comfortable ride, especially at higher speeds. If necessary, it can also act as a working vehicle. Its towing capacity is 8,200 pounds. According to Land Rover's chief of engineering, Nick Rogers, the Defender is the best SUV that Land Rover has ever built. At first glance, it's difficult to argue with that. Accessories such as expedition racks, rooftop tent, and waterproof inflatable side awning make it ideal not just for African adventures, but also for camping in the woods. That Land Rover can build such a fierce SUV is one thing, but what's more more surprising is that the Land Rover doesn't sacrifice performance despite its rugged capabilities. Granted, the ride isn't as smooth and refined as a new Range Rover or Discovery, but it's commendably close. The Defender has become more lively and interesting. The same goes 
was for better handling. The new 3-liter engine with 400 horsepower provides high performance for a large car. It can sprint from 0 to 60 in just 6.1 seconds with the top speed of 125 miles an hour, and it has a fuel consumption of 24 miles per gallon. As a comparison, the 5-door Nissan petrol Jeep, which has similar characteristics, accelerates from 0 to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds. At the same time, it has an engine with a capacity of 405 horsepower and a volume of 5.5 liters, and a fuel consumption of 16 miles per gallon. So the new Land Rover is not bad at all. The first to arrive in the US will be the new Defender 110, followed by the Defender 90.